Hello and welcome to the Visitor Information Centre on Pall Mall in central Bendigo. The centre is hosting a beautiful exhibition, Flamingo Park and Beyond, which celebrates the iconic fashion of Jenny Key and Linda Jackson. And today I have the great pleasure of joining both the artists here. Ladies, how do you feel to see your work displayed like this and to stand together and, and appreciate it? Well, it looks just amazing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's little bits and pieces from the beginning going right through to now. And uh, it just shows our range of work in this beautiful space. And it's, it's very alive and energetic. It, I, I really love this show. It's, it's very special, so colourful. But it's, it's, it's the general um, feel of us starting out in 1973 to 2016. And it looks beautiful in this space and it just works really well with people coming in and getting enveloped in the colour. It's just such a, a beautiful journey, as you say, of your time together. Yes. What's it like when Jenny and Linda get together? We have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Magic happens. Yep. Magic ha clearly it happens. <laughs> Magic happened back in 1973. We just were able to, you know, share, you know, like 43 years of, um, of being together um, you know, going on different paths, but really actually um, paralleling. Yes. Um, that's what's amazing about Linda and I, is that we've, we've, um, we've had this extraordinary design career, but somehow, well, I guess it's because our inspiration comes from Australia. We love, we're passionate about um, nature, mm -hmm. and that is reflected in all our work constantly. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't go away, you know, yeah. that connection and, that, and the friendship. But it's the nature and, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking around at the work. I mean, you know, Linda and I are con consistently inspired by, you know, look at Waratahs, you know, there's so many different versions of her <laughs> sort of Waratahs. And my, Jenny's Waratahs. My sort of Waratahs. And then we've Linda's got... Linda's opals. And <laughs> Jenny's opals. But then I'm looking at the desert and I'm looking at one of Linda's appliques and then I'm looking at my scarf and then I'm looking at, you know, the knit that's got um, Uluru right through it. You know, all these parallel inspirations that just come out in this most divine, creative way. Mm. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I urge you all to come down if you haven't already. I mean, there's another beautiful version <laughs> of Waratahs. And then, you know, in, in my black and white, there's all these peace signs and, and um, symbols of um, unity. Mm. It, it's, it's an earth first written on jumpers. You know, it's, it's, it's such a testament to our love of um, environment. Yes. And as a small space, mm. how it fits into the space and what it looks like is remarkable and really thrilling to see. When it's beautifully intimate, isn't it? It is, and it really works. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it sort of envelops you. In all, in all your designs, were you, did you, were you making statements on purpose about what you're putting on your designs about treasuring our earth and, oh, definitely. and those sorts of things. Absolutely yeah. on purpose. It was purpose. all done on purpose. And yeah. loving it and wanting to work out ways of being able to do that, like with hand painting or knitting, hand knitting, all of it, really mm. trying to emulate the country, inspire us and other people about how beautiful it is. Mm. And to treasure it. And to treasure it, exactly. But using it in, in completely... Um, beautiful ways like like the sewing of, of a garment like the knitting of a garment everything was made incredibly beautifully mm. and um, you know when I think of uh, what's happening now there's a beautiful exhibition of Victor and Rolf um, and they're, they're, they call themselves fashion artists mm. but in fact when Linda and I started we were, we were artists in fashion but it, the, 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 the garment always had to be wearable mm. And, and that, you know, that's personified in something as simple as that um, knitted outfit. I mean, it's, it's completely wearable. Yes. You know, we, we put it um, completely, um, we immerse ourselves in every, you know, turbans and the lot, but you can just take that scarf off. Wearing. It's a piece of art, but it's Yes, worn. you don't have to wear every single piece of it all the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, it, you can collect the pieces and you treasure them all. You can wear them out completely or you can hand them on to other, you know, someone else in the family, which is what lots of people tell us that, oh, that dress now, my niece has got it or 
she's wearing it out and she loves it. You know, oh, it's all treasures yes. and, and people should think more about clothes like that now. They it's should. really important because... And, and they should invest in them like that, shouldn't they? Yep. Not this fast fashion, but making it a no, clever but, investment that you mm. keep and share. Yes, but they, the, 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 the thing is that that's what we did. We always worked with limited editions mm. and, you know, e every piece is, is special with us. But that's not so with commercial fashion. So no. you, you can't go out and just, you know, I don't know get something from Country Road or, you know, young designers that are doing disposable type of fashion and, and think that you're going to keep it forever. But with Linda and I, it was always art pieces to be worn. So it's great to, um, to see your age group loving them and, and wanting appreciating them. appreciating it. Yes. yes. You guys have described yourselves as twin souls. How did your souls find each other? How did you create Flamingo Park Frock Salon? Well, I'd come back from London and um, I, I knew that I had to, um, when I decided to open a shop, I just knew that I had to do something that had never been sort of seen before because I'd been in the, the hub of what was absolutely amazing in the 60s in mm -hmm. London. And um, so I decided to set up Flamingo Park with a painting, um, the Flamingo Park painting that was done by my husband Michael Ramsden that had to be the centrepiece of the shop. I met Linda in June in uh, 1973. I opened the shop in August. As soon as I met Linda, you know, she had this lovely exhibition of, of uh, clothes that she was um, selling in the Manithan Galleries in, uh, or the Queen Street Galleries, I think, in, in, um, Sydney, yep. in Sydney. And she just had all the things that I was influenced by in London. They were they were her clothes, that, you know, because I was madly into the fifties. And we, Linda, we were madly into fifties prints and yeah. things like that. And, and Hawaiian that, prints. Yeah, and Hawaiian prints yeah. that I'd found in a shop in Melbourne. Right. Apart from Jobs Warehouse, which everyone knows, <laughs> but finding those things and then finding a like-minded person because people, when I took them up for this exhibition in Sydney, people said, you've got to meet Jenny Key. Yeah. And we could have met in London because I was there, but we weren't destined to meet then. And when we met, it's like now, we just were like this. Just clicked. Just clicked like that. It's like click, the, the glasses, the, glasses. the eyes. <laughs> it all happened. <laughs> yeah, the, the magic. It just it just happened and then, then this amazing symbiotic, um, relationship developed creatively where we we just did the most extraordinary fashion shows. And how did people respond to your designs when they saw your store? What, what was it like and to see famous people then go on to wear them like Princess Di wearing your koala jumper and that sort of thing? Well there were lots of really famous people and lots of not famous people at all and all of that was all a treasure as well mm. to know that someone in some suburbs was saving up to get something beautiful to wear as well as somebody of course, really famous is amazing as well. Yeah, sure. but I loved it when yeah. David Bowie came in and uh, <laughs> and Princess Di wore the knits and um, and Olivia Newton John and you know th there was just a swag of um, everyone who came, came to, to Sydney, Sydney <laughs> came had into to come there and, have and well, Lauren exactly. Bacall and Sophia Loren. I mean, we we had the cream of um, entertainers coming to Australia, and they would. The, you know, the Opera House and Flamingo Park. That's where they went. <laughs> Had to do both. Yes. <laughs> that is just, that is truly wonderful. Thank you for a little walk down memory lane well, together. And it's lovely to see you both enjoying your exhibition and the magic that you've created. I hope you continue to create magic. Thank you both very well, thank much. You. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> thank you.